Hello my friends, how's it going? My name is Vulcan and welcome to my channel. In today's video I am going to be going over how to play 2.6 Hog Cycle. Now this is not going to be um, uh, how to play it versus every single matchup video. Instead I'm going to go over some tips and tricks that I've learned from watching some of the top players um, play 2.6 and also from playing 2.6 myself. So I'm going to read a little bit off of script here, that way I don't have to completely memorize what I'm going to say. Um, 2.6 is one of the highest skill cap decks in the game, and I don't believe that there's really any like one way to play 2.6. You will find that um, some of the 2.6, or you will find that the top 2.6 pros kind of all have different play styles, um, but they also have quite a few things in common. I believe it is more about like sometimes when you're playing 2.6 it's about not playing the same way every single game it's about kind of tricking your opponent depending on how they're playing the game um you'll find that sometimes like even jack who's the best 2.6 bro he switches up his play style he doesn't do everything textbook every single game and obviously i'm not on the same level of play as like luke's x gamer or jack with 2.6 to name a couple pros um, but almost all the tips I'm given here are from watching Jack play, and I also did put, manage to push to Ultimate Champion last season 2.6, so I'm not like that terrible at it. Um, I think that one of the most m common misconceptions in this deck uh, is that you should cycle all of your cheapest cards and hog as much as possible. So basically, the, a common misconception is that you're always just cycling hog over hog over hog, and it's kind of true. But the the important thing is that you don't want to cycle a card that you needed on defense. So say, the, really the, the main things here are um, Ice Golem and Musketeer. You don't want to cycle Ice Golem and Musketeer at a wrong time. And I'm going to get to that later in the video. Um, the, the most important to think about, the most important thing to think about is cycling your cards efficiently so that you never fall behind in Elixir. If you fall behind an elixir, then you've probably already lost the game because they're gonna have a big elixir advantage on you. And since you don't have a lot of like heavy troops, um, it's just not gonna be a good scenario for you. So don't don't get caught up in the idea that you have to outcycle your opponent. In a lot of matchups, you do, but it's more important um, um, to be efficient about how you cycle your cards. So the most shocking thing that I noticed from um, watching top 200 2.6 pros some of the ones I already mentioned earlier was that sometimes they actually leak elixir. You would think, man, with 2.6 you never want to leak elixir. It's the cheapest stack in the game um, that's actually viable, but it's actually quite common that they will have a hand such as Ice Golem, Log, Musketeer, and like Cannon, for example, and they'll just wait a couple seconds, or maybe like 10 seconds even, because they want to see what their opponent does and they don't want to waste their ice golem which is really useful on defense what are the best cards to cycle the best cards to cycle is at the start of the game you want to go with your hog first play i don't think anybody can argue that's a bad play um if you don't have hog in hand you cycle skeletons or ice spirit in the back that's completely fine but just be careful about cycling your um, ice golem or log if you have to it's okay to cycle a log at the bridge or an ice golem in the back um ice golem would be a better card to cycle than log but you, sometimes you just want to wait a couple seconds if you're really, really trying to like win the game. So what do you do in single elixir? In single elixir, the main goal here is to establish a damage lead, a damage lead on one tower, and you really shouldn't be afraid to like switch lanes. It's not a big deal. Like say they go giant in the back, it's it's a usually a good idea to hog up his lane. They go gold in the back, lava in the back, anything like that. It's a good idea to keep the pressure up on the opposite lane, but um, once you like have damage on a lane, I in most matchups with set versus like Lava Hound and Golem, it's I wouldn't really recommend um, switching lanes. Even versus like Graveyard, it's actually usually a good idea to keep going same lane as the Graveyard whenever um, or any deck like that whenever they drop a troop in the back because otherwise you're just going to be splitting up all your tower damage while they're getting damage in one lane and they're going to end up beating you because you split your damage and they focused on one lane. So when double elixir comes around, you may notice that, man, you're focusing on this one lane, but you just can't break through their defense. So that's the point where you're going to start fireball cycling. Um, 
it's completely, and by fireball cycling, I mean it's not just like you fireball the tower by itself. What you do is when they drop a support card, like, um, say, a prince or a musketeer or um, anything that isn't a tank, you would um, fireball that card and then you can defend, cycle back. Since it's double elixir, you can be able to defend well, even though you kind of wasted a little bit of elixir. But you also got a little bit of value from it, so it wasn't a complete waste. And that way you don't have to switch lanes and you can finish off the tower without having to break through with Hog. Um, and in some matchups, you don't want a fireball cycle, like versus three musketeers, obviously, because you really need that fireball on defense. But versus decks where you don't need the fireball on defense, um, it's completely fine to fireball cycle them. So now I'm going to start getting into the more in depth tips and tricks. What I just did was kind of an overview, overview of the deck, but now I'm going to get into. Um, the really technical parts of how to play the deck. So when do you cycle Musketeer? And this is something that I was really confused about for a long time, but I kind of broke it down to three main rules that I like to follow. That way I'm not just cycling my Musketeer willy-nilly. So the number one thing that I figured out is after you cycled an Ice Golem, it's completely fine to go Musketeer behind it. And that is because if they decide to go opposite lane of your Musketeer and completely ignore it, they're still going to have to defend your Ice Golem plus Musketeer, because that's a pretty formidable push since you have a tank in front of the Musketeer. But say you just drop Musketeer by itself and you don't already have the Ice Golem down, then they can just pretty reliably ignore your Musketeer, go opposite lane, take your tower, and you won't have that Musketeer for defense. And it also won't really do anything on offense. So usually you only want to cycle your Musketeer once you already have an Ice Golem down versus most decks. Um, and another reason this is because is because say they go same lane as your musketeer with a tank in the back That musketeer is gonna walk up cross the bridge um, Say you drop a musketeer behind your tower at the same time as they drop a giant behind the tower That musketeer is gonna walk up cross the bridge It's gonna shoot the giant while their tower is killing your musketeer So that musketeer is, is essentially going to be a complete waste of elixir But if you place an ice golem down first then even if that musketeer crosses the bridge when they go giant in the back um, your Musketeer is still going to get a lot of damage off on that Giant or Golem or Lava Hound or whatever, and it's still going to be a valuable Musketeer that did a lot of work and causes them to use a support card which goes in front of their tank. So it's usually, you usually you want to get down that tank before you let your Musketeer cross the bridge or before you even play your Musketeer at all. Man, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this, but one other thing I like about um, playing Ice Golem the Musketeer is that say there's no troops on the field, right? You play your musk you play your ice golem and then you they haven't played anything. Then you play their musketeer. Your opponent, they decide to kill it with a spell. Any spell that kills an ice golem plus musketeer is gonna probably cost six elixir unless it's poison, and with poison the musketeer should probably walk out of the poison. So you're really gonna need six elixir to kill that musketeer. Say they fireball zap your musketeer. Then that's gonna mean that you are now up two you are now up two elixir, which frees you up to go on offense without having to worry too much about the counter push because you're up elixir. And the reason why is because you already had the two elixir ice golem down on the field before they played anything, which just reminds you that you're up two elixir. So since they spend even amount of elixir, you can just go on offense with that hog, which is um, an efficient way of cycling your cards, even though it's not the quickest way because musketeer costs four elixir. Okay, so here's another deal about cycling your musketeer. When you cycle it, try to get more or even value out of your musketeer. Say you're versus a graveyard deck. Your opponent goes mega minion in the back. You probably don't want to cycle your musketeer, but say they go baby dragon or they go bowler in the back. It's okay to cycle your baby your uh, musketeer because your musketeer is going to get more value against that bowler or more value against the baby dragon than the baby dragon or the bowler will get against the musketeer. So it's completely fine to cycle the same lane. But if it's a cheaper costing card than the Musketeer, like an Ice Golem, um, you probably don't want to cycle your Musketeer same lane as that Ice Golem. Instead, it's better to cycle a cheaper card and try to get back to your Hog quicker to keep up the pressure. And then the other case where I found that you'll cycle a Musketeer for kind of like no reason is um, when you're versus like a bait deck. Sometimes you want to cycle a Musketeer just like opposite, opposite lane of whatever tower they're attacking. That way they don't get spell value on you. And that way you can kind of build up a big push versus the bait deck because bait decks are all about the the like the chip damage where your deck is about chip damage too but so the only way to beat them is to kind of like 
build up a big push in some cases. So the way that you do that is you just musk to your opposite lane of the tower they're attacking and you try to kind of build up a big push that way. It's just kind of a trick. It's not like something you do every single time. It's just when you're kind of struggling to win a match or you're trying to catch your opponent off guard maybe. Okay, so now I have some tricks about how to play against siege decks and siege archetypes consist of expo and mortar. So one thing about facing expo and mortar is that um, when you cycle your ice golem, it's usually a good idea to cycle your ice golem same lane as the expo and mortar. And the reason this is, is that it allows you to cycle your ice golem first and then you can get, um, you have a tank for your musketeer. So you wouldn't want to play your musketeer first to kill the mortar of the expo because the mortar of the expo would just out dps the musketeer and they can log it to kill it but if you place an ice golem first it's going to be shooting that ice golem and you can finish off their siege tower with the musketeer and then another thing is that you don't want them to have enough elixir to fireball your musketeer and your ice golem so the way that you stop them from having enough elixir is that you hog opposite lane when the expo so what you do is you block with an ice golem you know you hog opposite lane and then you finish off their um, mortar expo with a musketeer. That way, they don't have they'll have they'll be forced to spend elixir on like a Tesla or a, or a, like a Goblin Gang. And that way, they don't have enough elixir to kill your musketeer that is killing their siege unit. Now, versus mortar expo, it's also okay to kill their um, their expo their mortar with the siege unit. But you really do want to be keeping up with the pressure of the hog opposite lane um for kind of the same reason because if they're able to predict that you're going to use a cannon to kill their mortar expo the cannon's just going to pretty much die instantly so sometimes if you can trick them and you know kill them with a cannon without um going opposite lane but you kind of want to switch up how you defend that way they're not able to predict what you do like sometimes if you know they're going to predict you like with an ice golem to block the cannon then maybe instead of playing the cannon right on top of the expo maybe you play the cannon in like the anti-hog position that way um, that it will kill, it will still block for the expo and it will kill the ice golem at the same time and then you can cycle back to uh, an ice golem drone to block the expo and then you can finish it off with like a hog or a musketeer or you can also finish it off with a, a fireball and a log. Now over to siege decks, you, you want to be going opposite lanes of the siege decks but if you you have a damage lead on a lane and they, and they try to go same lane as you then what you can do is you can just tank with cannons, ice golems, um, and hogs, and then you can just fireball cycle. You can hit um, the expo and the mortar or and the tower at the same time, or the mortar and the tower at the same time with a fireball and a log, and you can finish off the tower with um, fireball and logs if they're trying to block the lane with a siege unit. So how do you play versus a P.E.K.K.A deck? Versus P.E.K.K.A decks, you have to be careful because you don't want them to get value with their P.E.K.K.A on your hog rider. Like, by value, I mean you don't want your hog riders to only get one hit and then the P.E.K.K.A is on the counter push because your hog rider just like got no value and they're going to be up like quite a few elixir because I kind of just got um, a three elixir P.E.K.K.A. So how do you avoid this? First of all, don't send a lone hog when they have P.E.K.K.A in hand. Um, if you're going to send a hog, make sure you at least send it with an ice golem. That way, if they're going to have a counter push, at least the ice golem plus the hog got a lot of damage on their tower and they're probably going to be forced to over defend your hog or it's going to get like three hits on the tower because you had a hog plus an ice golem where if you just had a hog it's only going to get one hit. Versus um, P.E.K.K.A decks you can also split lane pressure. So say you go ice golem in the back and then you go musketeer behind it. They're going to play troops to defend that ice golem plus musketeer. When the musketeer and the ice golem cross the bridge you can go hog opposite lane at the same time so you're split lane pressuring and they're not going to have enough elixir to um, defend the musketeer and P.E.K.K.A on top of your hog at the same time, which means your counter push isn't going to be as powerful. Another important thing in this matchup is going to be, you know, trying to not play your cannon unless they play that battle ram, because I'm thinking of uh, P.E.K.K.A Bridgeman decks at the moment. And when you do play your cannon, try to keep it alive. Like, if they're not, if they don't have like a P.E.K.K.A on the field and they don't have a lot of troops already down the lane, um, try to defend your cannon like versus the battle ram with like skeletons or ice spirit. That way, um, you can freely hog and you're gonna have a cannon that's already on the field that's going to kill whatever they use to kill your hog with. Um, so it's just kind of like a, a tip to try to keep your cannon alive. Try, don't over defend it at all costs or anything, but just if you can, you know, try not to let that battle ram hit your cannon, stop it with ice spirits, ice spirit skeletons or log.
And then another thing you can do is sometimes versus peck players, if you don't have hog and cycle, they might go peck on the back. So what you do is, you know, you just play an ice golem, then a musketeer, you know, same lane as the pekka. You you let the peck across the bridge, and then they're gonna start attacking you. And what you can do is, while that peck is crossing the bridge, you can send a hog like to like over the river to either pull the pekka backwards or pull like a roll goes backwards or something like that. You can kind of use a defensive hog because what this does is the hog will, will help, kind of help you on defense. But it'll also be able to get a lot of damage from their tower because since they played P.E.K.K.A. in the back, they're not going to have enough elixir or even have P.E.K.K.A. in cycle to defend your Hog Rider. So it'll help you on defense and actually be able to get a lot of damage because they're not going to be able to have P.E.K.K.A. in cycle. How do you play versus Tornado decks? Um, if you're first in like an RG Tornado deck, you actually counter with 2.6, believe it or not, because you can pretty much Fireball cycle them and defend with Cannons and Musketeers and they're never going to be able to break through. So versus um, Tornado decks, if they have Tombstone, it's like always a good idea to Fireball the Tombstone. It's all about getting the Fireball chip chip damage. Versus Graveyard, in single Elixir, you don't want to do it, but in double Elixir, you want to be Fireballing like anything you, anything they drop, especially the Bowler. The Bowler's a really good thing to Fireball because if you Fireball a Bowler, then your Musketeer is going to be able to win the one-on-one -on -one battle versus the Bowler, which means your Musketeer is going to have a counter push, and it's also going to be able to kill like everything else that they drop. So that way you're getting damage on their tower, and you're also not letting them stack up a huge push because you're fireballing their most tanky unit. Versus Graveyard, um, you also don't want to waste log because if you waste log on offense, then they're going to be able to use a graveyard, and you're not going to have log to like kill the skeletons, and you might be in a bit of trouble because uh, you didn't have it. So just like it's okay to, if you're using it to kill something on offense, but... Don't try not to just like cycle log for no reason in this matchup. Obviously versus balloon freeze or any other type of tornado deck, it's completely fine to cycle log. So this is a super important thing I realized. Versus decks where you, or um yeah, versus decks where your hog is only gonna get one hit on the tower and it's not going to have a counter push, you actually want to send an ice golem with your hog. If your hog can get multiple hits on the tower and they have a counter push, it's completely fine. But if it's only getting one hit, there's no reason to send a lone hog because your counter push is just gonna be too strong. And yeah, it's just not the best idea. So the decks that you would send an ice golem hog versus are decks like um, bait decks because it's, they're just really good at stopping it. And this allows your hog, and also the ice golem is really good at stopping um, bait type cards. And you can use your fire blow or your log in combination with the hog ice golem to get a lot of damage on their tower. This works versus P.E.K.K.A. decks because the P.E.K.K.A. can counter a hog for only one hit and sometimes even zero hits. It's good to use Ice Comb Hog versus Hunter versus Prince. And yeah, as I said, pretty much any card that will stop the hog with one to zero hits but will also have a really good counter push. So versus Pump decks. And they actually did just like nerf three Musketeers. So you're not going to be seeing that many Pump decks probably. But always fireball the pump. It's like always a good idea to keep fireball and cycle for that pump. Like maybe they have a mini horde or something. So in that case, if you go with the Hog Ice Golem and they pump at the same time, um, you probably should commit your fireball to the mini horde. That way your hog doesn't like lose value and completely die since you're already committed to a push. But in most cases, if you have the fireball in hand and try not to waste it, um, a lot of times in single elixir, say they go musketeers in the back. You want to kill their musketeers without even using fireball by cycling one musketeer same lane as their musketeer and then killing the other two musketeers with like ice golem skeleton log that way you still have um fireball and cycle for the pump so just little tricks like that like don't waste your fireball uh versus pump when versus a deck that you need it to kill a pump so when you're playing the mirror matchup this is something that i noticed you actually don't want to cycle your hog as much as possible what you want to do is build up a musketeer push and what, what you should be focusing on is is playing musketeer opposite lane of the lane they're attacking i rarely see the top super six pros going same lane as each other they're like always going opposite lane of each other because if you go same lane with your musketeer it's just going to give them fireball value but if you go same lane with their hog, it's going to give them cannon value because uh, cannon is cheaper than the hog. So what you want to be doing in 2.6 mirror match is trying to obviously always have your cannon and cycle for their hog. N never allow yourself to get out cycled, but you actually want to be playing ice golems in the back and musketeers in the back. Um, and usually in the opposite lane of where they're attacking. Um, that way that you can build up uh, like a big push, get them to waste their fireball and try to trick them into having the elixir advantage.
that. So versus bait decks, especially um, mortar, you want to be playing your hog ice golem like as much as possible. Like sometimes you even play it when you're just at six elixir because you're trying to outcycle their mortar or you're trying to outcycle. Well, versus mortar, you want to play it at six elixir a lot because you're just trying to outcycle their mortar. But even versus like log bait decks, it's a good idea to um, be cycling your your hog and your ice golem as much as possible because you want to be outcycling their defense. Um, and you actually don't really want to be playing Musketeers in this matchup. Um, maybe you can use a Musketeer to pr kill a princess or sometimes like if they already have a big pushdown. But a lot of times you actually want to be playing your cannon instead of your Musketeer versus bait decks. And this is just so that you have a quicker cycle and you can cycle to that Ice Golem Hog quicker and be able to outcycle their defense. And I'll get into some more tech tips on how to use that cannon on defense exactly in a minute. Okay, so now let's get into the tech tips. So the first tip is gonna be versus um, a giant or a golem deck or a heavy beatdown deck like that. I'm pretty sure those are the only decks that this would really apply to. Don't play your musketeer slain lane as their giant or their golem right away. Because if you play it, and I already mentioned this earlier, if you play it like at the same time as them, it's gonna cross the bridge too early or it's just gonna get too close to their side of the bridge and they're gonna be easily be able to kill your musketeer and it's just going to lose value. So what you want to do versus these decks is maybe, you know, if you have hog in hand, just go hog opposite lane. But if you don't have hog in hand, then um, sometimes you even just want to, like, waste a log, cycle skeletons, kind of, like, waste waste an ice spirit, even though you lose a little bit of elixir, and then you play your musketeer slain lane, just so that your musketeer doesn't watch, walk too close to their side of the bridge and they can't kill it easily, which is your main source of DPS on the defense, and they're going to be able to break through on your offense. So just maybe waste a couple cards waste a little bit of elixir just so that your musketeer doesn't go too high up so on defense if they use a miner to kill your musketeer don't let your musketeer just die um try to defend it with skeletons try to defend it with ice spirit and even defend your musketeer with log versus a miner if they go miner on top of your musketeer and as long as the musketeer isn't locked on something else and you log it and you log the miner then the i'm pretty sure that the musketeer kills the miner so just try to defend your message here and try not to let it die out of that miner. This also applies to barb barrels that are used to kill your musketeer. If it's on offense, you can log on offense to get your musketeer to kill the barb barrel. Or if your musketeer is too high on the bridge and they use a barb barrel to like hit it over the bridge, you can log ice spirit or skeletons to keep your musketeer alive. Just try to protect that musketeer and not let it die versus a miner or a barb barrel. And then there is a tricky, a lot of you guys have probably already seen, it's a double cannon pull to King Tar. And this is something that Jack actually used to beat me last season. Um, I was using Balloon Freeze, and literally I was like winning every single game versus 2.6. But he used this, he used this versus me when I played a, a minor balloon of the bridge. And he managed to beat me because of this trick, even though, even though I countered him. So yeah, it's like, it's a trick that you don't want to use in a lot of scenarios. But sometimes when you're you're just like you're gonna lose a game if you if you don't do it it's it is it is the right way to go and you're just gonna have to decide it from experience. But I'll put up on the screen like an example of how to double cannon pull a balloon to the king tower. Um, normally versus balloons though, there's a different way you want to defend it. Um, there is the anti balloon position, which if you place a cannon at the very top of the bridge in the middle or one tile lower it'll pull a balloon even when it's placed in the bypass position if you play it any lower than that and it's placed in the bypass position it will not pull the balloon unless it's one tile closer to your crown tower as i'm showing on the screen so if so usually you want to play it you know right at the top of the bridge unless they already have support troops coming down the lane or they have enough elixir to play support troops to quickly kill that cannon in that case where they have enough elixir to play the support troops to quickly kill the cannon you want to play your cannon lower so versus lava loon what this is going to allow you to do is you can play your cannon like high or play it in the lower anti balloon position and then you actually don't want to use your musketeer to kill the lava hound in single elixir at least you you want to use your musketeer to um, kill the balloon because if you're keeping up your pressures with hog then they're not going to have enough elixir to fireball or zap your musketeer and it's going to be able to kill the balloon um, before it hits the tower and since the lava hound doesn't do a lot of damage you'll be able to kill the balloon but versus balloon freeze decks um, one trick you can do is play your musketeer opposite lane of where they're attacking you can pull the balloon to the tower and then you can use your musketeer in the opposite lane that way they can't freeze your tower plus the musketeer at the same time and it can allow your 
um, must tier to kill the balloon and not get frozen. And then one other thing is that some, a lot of times you're going to have to use your fireball and defense versus like a balloon deck because um, you never want to let that balloon connect to the tower and sometimes your must tier DPS is just not enough. So it's completely fine. Don't be afraid if, if the balloon's going to get a shot on the tower to use a can to defend it even after you use your musket tier to fireball it because you at all costs do not want that balloon getting hit on your tower so versus royal giant decks if you're just using a cannon and skeletons to defend the royal giant the royal they're just gonna be able to fireball your cannon easily and you know barbell your skeletons so versus royal giant decks you never really want to have your um, musketeer out of cycle versus the royal giant because if you cycle musketeer at the wrong time they can go royal giant obviously link your musketeer and get a ton of de damage on your tower so you always see musketeer in cycle, and you always protect your musketeer because a lot of royal giant decks you'll have fireball and they won't have log. Instead of bar barrel, and since bar barrel, since the fireball doesn't completely kill a musketeer, um, you can try to keep your musketeer alive for as long as possible. So you like want to kind of defend your musketeer at all costs. A one HP musketeer still holds just as much value as a full HP musketeer on defense versus a royal giant. So a lot of times it's a really good idea to defend um, a graveyard or a miner with a cannon and there's a couple positions. You can drop it directly below your king tower or you can drop it to the right or the left of the, sorry, the crown tower, the right or the left of the crown tower, um, but like one tile higher. And the reason you want to drop it um, in the higher position is if they already have like support troops coming down the lane. That way it can kill the support troops and then finish off the minor graveyard. But the reason you drop it lower is if um, they only have a minor and your tower's low on health, or if they have a graveyard, you always want to be dropping your cannon behind the tower to defend the graveyard, unless you don't have enough elixir to also play a musketeer to DPS down the support troops and then have the cannon to defend the graveyard versus tornado decks um if they don't have bowler in hand it's a good idea to go ice goal and plus hog and that way that if they use the the tornado to try to activate the king tower the ice goal is going to block the hog from going to the king tower or if um even if they already have the king tower activated if you get down an ice spirit or an ice golem with that hog then they're going to have to kill the ice golem with the ice spirit first before they tornado it because otherwise their tornado does not have enough like suction power to pull the hog away without getting a hit on the tower so it's a good idea versus these decks to go hog plus ice golem that way they have to overcommit on their defense if you're versing a spawner deck and they play like furnace barb hut uh goblin hut high usually what you want to do is you know wait for their first wave of spawner troops to die then you can it's a it's like always a good play to snipe it with a musketeer across the bridge if they try to use something to kill your musketeer, like they, they put like a mega minion right on top of your musketeer because it's sniping over the bridge, you can actually place an ice golem right on top of that musketeer and it'll push the musketeer back and it'll block from the musketeer and allow the musketeer to either finish killing or it'll actually put some mus it'll actually push the musketeer out of range of the spawner and allow it to um, kill like the mega minion or the baby dragon or whatever air troop or whatever troop they use to try to kill your musketeer over the bridge, that way you get a lot of value out of your musketeer. Usually you don't want to fireball the spawners when they're high enough to hit it with a musketeer. Um, if they play it lower, you should hog opposite lane, you shouldn't um, fireball the spawner. The only time you really want to fireball a spawner like that is when you're already like focused on a tower, you already have a lot of damage on it, and they're just lane blocking it with that spawner. Like they're playing it um, low enough to defend it a hog um, in that lane but not on the other lane, but and then they're playing it low enough so that a musketeer can hit it across the bridge then you can fireball that spawner because um, you're already focused on that lane but if it's early game and they play it high um, kill it with the musketeer um, if it's early game and they play it low just hog opposite lane so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video it took me a solid hour to record if that tells you anything it's going to take me a decent amount of more time to edit um, I didn't tell you, you know, every single minuscule detail about playing 2.6, but I tried to pick out some of the important things that have helped me play it better along the way, um, and will hopefully help you play it better. And I think that all these tips were pretty much inspired by the man, the myth, the legend, Jack himself, the best 2.6 player in the game. So both of them should be pretty, pretty accurate and pretty on point, I hope. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content, hope, I hope to come out with some some ladder videos of top 200 pushing and that's gonna wrap it up so see you guys later Vulcan out